Here in section 2.4, we're going to look at the concept of what we call a limit. Here I have the formal definition of what a limit is. It says the function f has the limit l as x approaches a, written, and then we have lim, we have x, and we have a little arrow pointing toward a, of the function, so it's important that we're taking the limit of a function, is equal to l. If the value of f of x can be made as close to the number l as we please by taking x sufficiently close to, but not equal to, this is important, the value of a. Uh, so in words, what this says is that as we choose x values, so we look at either side of your particular target x value that we call a. So we're looking at x values on either side of a. And as we get really close to a, and as we choose x values that are cl really close to a, we want to know what y value are we actually getting close to. And that particular y value is what we call l, or the limit of the function. If that y value exists, we call that l, that l value, we call that uh, the limit of the function. All right. And we're going to make a note. If you're not getting close to one particular y value, then we say that the limit does not exist, and we're going to abbreviate that as DNE. Okay, so let's kind of look at an example of what we mean by this definition. So it says to use the graph to determine the limit. Okay, so it says find the limit as x approaches a, as x approaches a, which is our one. So our a value is 1, so let's write out kind of our definition. Our target x value, our target value is the a value, and that's 1. So that's right here. This is our target value. We want to know the limit of the function as we approach. So as I approach 1 from the left, so I'm going to glide along the function from the left, and I'm going to glide along the function from the right. As I approach from both sides, what y value are we getting close to? So this is our target a value and as we choose x values we said to the left and to the right gliding along the function getting closer and closer to, to 1 what is the y value that we're getting close to? Well the y value of this particular point that we're approaching is 0. So the limit of the function as x gets close to 1 from both sides that limit is what we call 0. All right. We're asked to find something else in example one. We want to know what is the limit of the function as x approaches negative 2. So negative 2 is now our target value. So when I look at the function here, this is my target x value now. My a value is negative 2. So you want to find the limit as x approaches negative 2. So I want to come, come along the function from the left side and from the right side. Now notice that my target x value, that point on the function is way up here. And as I glide along the function on either side of that x value, I want to know what is the y value that I'm getting close to. Well, the y value that I'm getting close to um, on either side, kind of approaching from either side of negative 2, the y value that I'm getting close to is 3. So we would say that the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left and from the right of the function is 3. Okay, so we want to get really close to that target value from the left and from the right, and then we want to know what is the y value that we're getting close to as we approach that target x value from the left and from the right. An example two kind of illustrates this point right here that we were talking about with our formal definition. Okay, we don't have to look at exactly what happens at the target x value, just what happens as we get sufficiently close to that target x value from the left and from the right. Okay, So here we want to know what is the limit as x approaches 3 of our function. So our target x value is right here. So let's look at the function and what's happening around x equals 3. We notice that there's a hole there. That's okay. What we want to know is what's happening as we approach from the left, so as I choose x values really close from the left, and as I choose x values really close from the right, so I'm approaching very closely on the left and from the right, what I want to know is what is the y value that it looks like we are approaching. All right, so as I glide along the graph, it looks like I'm approaching 
on either side looks like I'm approaching a y value of 3. Okay, so this is the y value that looks like we're getting close to um, from the left and from the right. Okay, so the function does not have to be defined there. We can have a hole there. And notice that the limit is not 4. It's not what exactly is happening at that x value, that target x value. Okay, it's what looks like we're approaching. If we were to keep going in that same pattern, uh, it looks like we're actually, we would run right into 3, y equals 3. Okay, it doesn't look like we would end up way up here. It appears, if we continue on our pattern, that we would have hit y equals 3. So that is the limit as we choose x value, super close to the left and super close to the right of 3. All right. Okay, let's look at another graph here. We want to find the limit as x approaches negative 2 of our function. So here's our function f of x. And let's look at our target x value. Our target x value is negative 2. So we notice that there's actually two different locations on our graph. So as we glide, glide along the graph from the left, now keep in mind that we want to get really, really close to that point. Okay, what does it look like that we are approaching if I choose x values really, really close to that point? Well, it looks like I'm approaching, getting close to a y value of about, let's say about 1.5. And this is approaching from the left. But I also want to see what happens as I am approaching from the right. So as I glide along the graph from the right, and I want to get really, really close to this point where x is equal to negative 2, it looks like I'm approaching a y value of negative 2. So the definition of a limit says that when you approach from the right and from the left, that we have to be approaching only one particular y value. But from the left, I'm approaching 1.5. And from the right side along the function, um, close to negative 2, I'm approaching negative 2. So see, since we're not approaching the same y value from the left and from the right, then we would say that here that the limit does not exist. Remember that we are using the abbreviation DNE to stand for does not exist. So we have to be approaching one particular y value as we approach that target x value from the left and from the right. So as we glide along the graph approaching that target x value from the left and from the right, we have to be getting close to the same y value. If we're not getting close to a one particular y value, then we would say that the limit does not exist. Let's look at a table of values. So let's say that I want to determine a limit from a table of values. So here I'm given the function x squared plus x minus 2 divided by x minus 1. And we're asked to find the limit as x approaches 1. So we're going to choose x values really, really close to the left of 1 and really close to the right of 1. We want to know what is the limit what y value are we getting close to as our x values get close to 1 from the left and from the right. So first of all, um, let's kind of treat this line right here as x equals 1 as our target x value. Okay, We're going to choose values that are on the number line just to the left. So 0 0.9, 0 0.99, and 0.999. Now these values are super close to 1. Okay, we want to see what happens when we put in 0 0.9. So I'm going to do 0 0.9 squared plus 0 0.9 minus 2, and I'm going to divide that by 0 0.9 minus 1. Okay, we're going to throw that into our calculators, and then we're going to see what we get. So when I put that into my calculator, I get 2.9. All right, so for the next one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put 0 0.9. 99, I'm going to square that. I'm going to add that to 0.99, subtract 2, I'm going to divide by 0.99 minus 1, throw all of that into my calculator, and I get 2.99. Okay, we we'll do the same thing for the next value. We're going to take 0.999, square it, add that to 0.999, subtract 2, and then divide by 0.999 minus 1. So here I get 2.999. Nine, nine. 
So what does it look like that the y values are getting close to? And keep in mind that these are the y values of our function. So these are my x values that go in. These are the y values that come out. It looks like the y values are getting closer and closer and closer to a y value of 3. Now it has to be the same from the left and from the right. So I'm going to choose x values that are just a little tiny bit bigger than 1. So we're going to come up and approach x equals 1 from the right. So I'm choosing 1.001, 1.01, and 1.1. So I'm going to start with the biggest, and then we're going to approach and come in closer and closer. So if I put in 1.1 um, into the function, okay, so that's 1.1 squared plus 1.1 minus 2 divided by 1.1 minus 1, I actually get about 3.1 from the function. Okay, I'm going to do it again. 1.01 squared plus 1.1, sorry, 1.01 minus 2. Then I'm going to divide that by 1.01 minus 1. Throw all of that into my calculator, and the y value that I get is 3.01. Okay, last one. We're going to do 1.001 squared plus 1.001 minus 2. Divide that by 1.001 minus 1. And when I put that into my calculator, I end up with 3.001. So as I'm getting closer, choosing x values that are closer and closer to 1, what are my y values seem to be getting close to? Well, they seem to be getting close to the same y value that I got when I was approaching from the left. So here we would say that the limit as x approaches 1 of our function, we would say that the limit is 3 because we're approaching a particular y value as we get close to that target x value from the left and from the right. It says here, why does the limit uh, exist near 1 even though x equals 1 is not defined for the function? So this is kind of a throwback to lesson 2.1. We were talking about asymptotes and holes. When we put in x equals 1 into the function, notice that the denominator becomes 0, which makes the function undefined. So when we look at the function for this, when I graph this, what we notice is that the top and the bottom are going to factor, and x minus 1 is going to cancel. So I just want to look at a quick little picture of what the graph of this looks like. So at x equals 1, we end up with a hole. As we approach from the left and as we approach from the right, we notice as we approach from the left and from the right of that target x value of 1 that the y value that we're getting close to is 3. So a hole. Um, just has a little blip on the graph, and therefore, as we approach from the left and from the right, we actually do end up with a valid limit. Okay, let's contrast that with the next example. All right. So here, my next example, um, I have f of x equals 1 over x minus 2, and we want to find out what is the limit as x approaches 2. Now notice that if I put a 2 into the function, we get 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. But notice that it does not factor and does not cancel, therefore we have an asymptote. So let's see what happens as we approach that asymptote from the left and from the right. So we're going to treat this as our target x value, x equals 2. And we're going to come up to it from the left. So I'm getting values just a little bit smaller than 2, 1.9, 1.99, 1.999. And we're going to throw them into the function in place of x. So 1 over 1 1.9 minus 2. All right, I end up with negative 10. Um, 1 minus 1.99 minus 2. I get negative 100 in my calculator. And then 1 divided by 1.999 minus 2, I get negative 1,000. So you notice that my y values are getting more and more negative, but not approaching any particular y value. In fact, it seems to be going downward toward negative infinity. Now negative infinity, if I'm continually decreasing without bound, then um, negative infinity is not a particular y value, that is just a concept. So the limit for the left, I would say, does not exist. Okay, so we're not approaching a particular y value on the left. Well, let's see what happens on the right. So I'm going to go from 2.1 to 
2.01 and 2.001. So we're going to approach from the right, getting closer and closer to our target x value of 2. So we're going to do 1 divided by 2.1 minus 2. I get 10. 1 divided by 2.01 minus 2, I get a positive 100. And then 1 divided by 2.001 minus 2, I end up with 1,000. So we notice here that our y values are getting larger and larger and larger. And in fact, they appear to be increasing forever, going towards a positive infinity. So then we're not approaching a particular y value um, on either side. And we also notice that we're not approaching the same thing from either side as well. So in this particular example, since we're not approaching the same particular y value from both sides, we would say that the limit does not exist. Okay. A quick little note here, it's kind of a throwback to lesson 2.1 at the end. We're talking about the difference between an asymptote and a whole. And since, uh, well, since we can't factor and cancel, the problem in our denominator of x being 2 is a problem that stays. We actually have a vertical asymptote there. So let's, look, let's take a peek at what the graph of this particular function looks like and make sure we understand why that the limit would not exist. Okay, so here's our... Here's our picture of that function. And when I look around on either side of x equals 2, we notice that we have our vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And on the left and from the right, as I glide along the graph from the right, we're approaching positive infinity for y. And as I glide along the graph from the left of x equals 2, we see that the graph is going down forever toward negative infinity. So if I'm approaching positive or negative infinity, um, the limit does not exist because we're not approaching a particular y value. So in this example, the asymptote and the asymptotic behavior near that asymptote um, causes the limit not to exist.